Today we have the 2022 Honda CRV EX, which I believe is probably the best value CRV trim level. This is the last year of this generation for the CRV, but Honda still offers a really practical, good overall vehicle, especially with this EX trim level. Well, today we're going to take a detailed look at the exterior, look at the interior as well, and get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now real quick before we get started, my name is Nolan, I do full reviews like this every single week, so if you want to see more, subscribe down below, but also at the bottom of the timeline you can find chapters, or if you go into the description you can find chapters, so you can skip around to different parts of the video and go see exactly what you want to see. But also a huge thank you to Honda Cars of Rockwall for letting me take this vehicle out. They've been letting me show you vehicles for several years now, so if you're in the market for a new Honda, be sure to check them out, I'll put their information below. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at all of these exterior details. So on the outside or the inside, really nothing changes for 2022, except the Touring model now gets all-wheel drive standard. But this is about the EX, which I believe is the best value trim level for this Honda CRV. Now up front, you're gonna see the sensor for the Honda Sensing right in the front there in this black mesh grille. You get a little bit of a different design angle here compared to the pre-refreshed model a couple years ago. You can see you have LED fog lights below, but up front you actually get halogen headlights on everything except the Touring model. You still get LED daytime running lights that run around the headlight, but those are all halogen, which is a little bit disappointing. It is nice that Honda actually does give you an LED blinker though, so up front you've got some nice looks. Just wish we had LED headlight standard. The paint color on this one is called Radiant Red Metallic. It's got a nice metallic -y sheen to it. It has a tiny bit of an orange look to it when the sun is really shining on it. And the wheels on this EX model are 18 inch wheels. They'll kind of vary depending on the trim level paired with 235 60 tires. On the side, you'll see you also get a turn signal in the mirror. That mirror is also heated and it has a blind spot indicator in it. Honda does not do the lane watch and you get body color door handles here as well. Dimensionally, the CRV is 182 inches long, so it's right in the middle for this compact class, and ground clearance is actually pretty good from 7.8 to 8.2 inches. Then, looking at the back, Honda gives you a little bit of a smoked taillight look. You do get LED turn signal back here and some LED taillights as well with those LED light bars, some halogen or some incandescent aspects to it with the backup lights, and then just your basic exhaust down here. The Touring will give you a nicer looking double exhaust. Now moving to the cargo area, the CRV really does excel here. So it's just a manual lift gate on this EX trim level. If you want a power lift gate, EXL, hands free on the Touring. Now behind the second row, you're gonna get 39 cubic feet, which is just fantastic considering the size of the vehicle. You can see it swallows up my backpack, no problems at all. On each side, you'll get a deep area for some extra little storage. You've got a tonneau cover, a spot to put the tonneau cover. You even have a light on both sides back here, which is great to see. The one thing I would like to see that I don't see in here is like a grocery bag hook or a cargo net hook, but you have a couple of fixed tie downs on the back and then a couple tie downs up there. But wait, there's even more. So you can pull this out, drop it down, and then it's a little bit lower. So you've got a lower, technically, taller area of loading thanks to this removable cargo floor or dual load cargo floor. This is an optional mat right here. You can lift this up and of course you get a spare tire and look Honda even put some sound deadening material back here. That's great. Another thing that's awesome is that Honda gives you levers to be able to fold the seats down. It's a 60-40 fold. The seat belt hanging onto it but it still went down. So look at that. That's nice. Now remember, oh well I haven't showed you yet, but that front seat is all the way back. Let's see if we can fold this down without the headrest touching it. Oh, there it goes. So you don't even have to move that front seat. And if you have this load floor up, you've got a really nice big flat load floor with about 75 cubic feet. So this is just awesome. The EX gives you Honda's smart key system standard with remote start on the key fob as well. So the way it works is you've got a few little lines on here to lock it or you have a sensor in the back to unlock it. And Honda's got a feature, they've had it for a while, where you shut the door, if you have it turned on, you can back away or walk away and it will automatically lock. Now as we move inside to look at these front seats, I haven't been able to spend an extended period of time in here, but 
I like the contouring of them. You've got some decent bolstering on the side. The cloth material on this EX is also nice with a little bit of bolstering around the butt. But the thing that I like the most is that these are 12 way power adjustable seats. So I mean, you've got up, down, front, back, up, down, tilt, back and forth, and then four way lumbar support. That's fantastic. The steering wheel is manual tilt and telescoping, and it's got a pretty good range of motion as well. There's no leather wrapped wheel on the EX. You'll have to move up in trim level for that. Now these seats are also heated and the headrest is not intrusively far forward. That's something I complain about with quite a few vehicles. And I've been comfortable in here the multiple times I've been in here, but like I said, I haven't been able to spend extended period of time in here. Now the back seat is probably the best place to be in the CRV. It's big and spacious and it's got all the amenities that you need. So as we take a look, it's the same cloth material that you get in the front seat. And let me go ahead and hop in and show you just how spacious it is. So first of all, on the door, this is a harder touch material up here, which is a little bit surprising, but you've got the same soft material everywhere else on the door and a good couple bottle holders down there too. Now the best spot is right here behind the driver. I'm five foot nine. This is about where I'm pretty comfortable and I've got tons of leg space, foot space. My knee room is just excellent. You can really kind of lounge out here. In the middle, you've got air conditioning vents, always good to see, two fast charging USB ports. And then right next to me, we've got a center folding armrest, which is padded with some small bottle holders. Now, even better, I have this passenger seat all the way back with kind of just a medium recline, and I still have good space. So if you are tall and you're gonna have that seat all the way back, you're covered. I mean, your backseat passengers will be just fine. Even the middle doesn't hardly have a hump at all. And headroom is good in here. Pfft plenty of headroom. There's actually a pretty good cutout right here. And these seats can recline a little bit. They don't scoot forward and backwards, but at least they can recline a little bit for extra comfort. So the back seat is a big thumbs up. Now hopping inside of the CRV, this still has aged well for this interior. You've got a mix of nice materials, some wood look trim pieces, and just kind of a clean overall design. Now this does have push button start right there. We start it up. You get the digital display in the middle. This steering wheel is not leather wrapped on this trim level, but you can get it leather wrapped moving up. Over on the door, you've got a nice soft material up above if you like to rest your arm. This trim piece right here looks nice as well. Then you have this really soft material around your arm and a soft armrest. Even though it gets a little small back here, it's still pretty nice. The front two windows are automatic one touch. The door has a couple dedicated bottle holders and my large bottle even fits right there. And there's space right here to be able to put a small umbrella back that way. And the steering wheel has easy to use controls. You've got information and radio controls on here, voice controls and radar cruise controls as well. And this does have the lane keeping system, Honda sensing, radar cruise control, emergency braking, all that comes with that sensor in the front. Now right here, one thing I wanna point out is we have a couple of little flashing lights. This car literally just got checked in, so not everything is completely set up, but so just ignore that, that's just part of the check-in process. Honda's display up here, you've got a couple of different aspects. You've got temperature on the left, fuel on the right, and then you've got this fully digital display in the middle with the tachometer right up at the top, speedometer, digital, and then customizable information underneath. Like right there, you see the trip computer and this card literally just got checked in, so don't worry about the trip mileage on there, but you've got a couple different trip computers. It'll remind you to take a break, settings, you can see music, your phone, and you can customize this a little bit. It's not quite as extravagant as some competitors, but it gives you all the necessary information. And then coming over to the middle, this touchscreen is a seven inch touchscreen. You do get the volume knob, which was a complaining point a few years back. You've got these buttons over here so you can quickly go to home, audio, phone, a couple of shortcuts. It's nice to have that. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard, but we don't have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You still have Honda's older system here. It's still easy to use, but it's not as up to date as some competitors, I guess, I guess you could say. And this EX model gives you a six speaker system. Honda's not known for having great audio systems, but it's probably good enough for some of you. While we're up here, let's go into reverse. And one thing I like is that Honda gives you a few different angles. So you've got uh, kind of a wide angle, you've got a straight normal angle, and then a straight down view if you're backing up to something. Shifter's a little bit strange being right here. I'm not a huge fan of it being kind of like right in the middle of everything up there, but it opens up a pretty big space down here. But while we're up here, we've got dual zone climate control. As you can see, we've got uh, driver and passenger, got a nice little tactile click to it as well as you move it. Heated seats, three tier on both sides in here, and this is all easy to use and in a good place. Electronic parking brake and brake hold to hold you in place if you need it to. 
economy mode, and a button to turn off your auto stop start. And down here, Honda redesigned the center console after the refresh a couple of years ago. You've got a couple of USB ports. Sorry, it's focusing on that. One for Apple CarPlay, one slow charging USB port. Just a storage bin right there. No wireless charging on the EX model. The cup holders are good size on both sides and in a pretty good place. This armrest can move forward and backwards a couple of different notches. It's kind of touchy, but I love how you can move it forward to where you can have your elbow and still be able to touch the steering wheel. If we move that back, lift up, you've got a huge customizable area. There's also a 12 volt power outlet in here. So check this out. You've got this thing right here folded up. You can fold it down, have a little tray, or you can extend this forward and have just like a two tiered shelving system here. So this is really nice and practical from Honda. Honda also gives you a good size locking glove box. There's no automatic dimming mirror or garage controls on the EX. You can move up in trim level to get those. Same with interior lighting. And then inside, you still get a sunglass holder and a conversation mirror. So check that out. You can literally kind of keep an eye on people in the back if you've got kids in car seats or you want to talk to them. It's a little easier with that. Then we've got a regular size moonroof in here as well. There's no panoramic roof available on any CRV model. It's also a vanity light and a mirror. And one thing that is nice with Honda is the entire visor will slide out. Now, how's the visibility out of here? The front pillar is actually pretty small. Looking out the back, good visibility out that second window. The third window is okay. I'll let you be the judge. Now, moving under the hood, nothing changes for this Honda CRV over the last couple of years. You still get the 1.5 liter direct injected turbocharged four cylinder with 190 horsepower and 179 pound feet of torque paired with a CVT transmission standard. So Honda used to give you a naturally aspirated option a few years ago, but they don't do that anymore. Every trim level, no matter what you get, gets the same powertrain, this 1.5 liter turbo. Now, if you've heard of, or you're curious about Honda's oil dilution problem, I don't know the latest of that, but I'll try to put some information in the description below on any updates if there are some. Efficiency is excellent in this CRV with this front wheel drive model at 28 miles per gallon city and 34 miles per gallon highway, 30 miles per gallon combined. All right, y'all, let's get going on the test drive in this 2022 Honda CRV. Now, I've driven the CRV multiple times, but I have never been able to spend an extended period of time with any CRV as a press vehicle. So these are mostly first impression based and the thing that you'll like about the CRV is that it's responsive and it's fairly peppy for this class. With the turbo, you know, it doesn't have a ton of power, it doesn't have a ton of torque, but that turbo power and torque comes out pretty quickly. So you don't have to mash on the throttle in order to get going. And as far as ergonomics go, it's easy to reach the screen, the shifter's in a good spot, little storage areas down here. The digital display right there is nice and clear right in front of you, no head up display on here. But comfort wise, I've been very comfortable in here. Like I said, I haven't been able to spend an extended period of time in here though. Now, like I said, this does have the CVT. So you get some, a little bit of unusual driving dynamic and characteristics with the acceleration. It can be a little bit wind up-ish and bandy that I've noticed in the Accord as well as the Civic with the CVT, but it's pretty responsive. I mean, just cruising along, get a little bit of pedal. And you don't have to really wait for a big downshift or anything like that. It just responds when it needs to. And ride comfort in the CRV is good. It's comfortable. It's probably not the most comfortable in the class, but it's definitely comfortable enough for what I think most people would want. I'd say the CRV is just a good balance of ride and handling. And that seems to be Honda's go-to, to be good at both, not the best ride, but definitely good driving dynamics overall. The weight of the steering is pretty lightweight as well. That's another Honda key characteristic in these vehicles, kind of like the Civic, where it's just really easy to maneuver and drive around, especially this size of a vehicle. No problems at all with that. Now, for those of you that wonder about road noise, this does have an active noise cancellation standard. So I'm not sure how well it does on rough textured roads like I usually test for decibel ratings. If I can ever get one for extended testing, I will definitely do some decibel ratings. Our EX trim doesn't have laminated glass here, so I can't say anything about upper trims. I don't believe they do to help with noise suppression, but in limited time, the CRV doesn't seem to be excessively loud. 
And this road is a little bit un uneven and you can feel that the CRV has a little bit of tautness in its suspension. It doesn't necessarily feel like a sporty suspension, but it's a responsive suspension. You feel some bumps, but it's certainly not harsh in any aspect. Now we're still just in normal mode. Go ahead and get on it a little more. And that's the sound that you get with the uh, CVT. Just a little bit droney. It doesn't have the usual shifts that you see. And this car was just checked in. It's got like three miles on it. So I'm not gonna really ramp on it as a brand new car. But the turbo kicks in very quickly and very early. So that's the biggest thing. If you just want a car that is easy to drive around, it's got good characteristics of driving dynamics, nothing that stands out, but it's quick and responsive, then the CRV is, is probably good for you. And like I said, ergonomics wise, comfort wise in here, things are good, but let's go ahead and close things out. So in conclusion with this 2022 Honda CRV EX, I still believe this EX gives you the best bang for buck for the CRV trim levels. And even without the trim levels into consideration, the CRV is still efficient, it's spacious, it's practical, it's a decent daily driver as well. But I'd love to know what you think down below. Would you go for this 2022 CRV EX or a different trim level or wait for the redesigned, hopefully 2023 CRV? Thank you again for watching and thank you to Honda Cars of Rockwall. Subscribe if you like this video and we'll catch you next time.